Hey guys, Anthony here. It's Sunday again. It's um, May 22nd, 2022. I just posted a video on some social media uh, that I had posted uh, yesterday and some transactions with people asking questions regarding what I posted. And I did a response to that video and it's just posted on my YouTube channel. But I thought I'd do some follow-up videos using some notes here taken from this book. This is the book I recommended to the lady that commented on my post yesterday. This is one book that will really open your eyes to uh, what has been perpetrated over the centuries with our faith, with the, with the so-called Christian faith, um, and how it was uh, infiltrated by paganism and accepted by uh, the church at the time, the Catholic Church, and then its tentacles have gone out and it still permeates today in the modern uh, church. And so I, being a part of that church at one time, uh, believed in some of the things that were taught. And I'm not saying that um, all of my time spent in the, uh, I, I was both in the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church I uh, grew up a Catholic. I'm going to do a whole separate video on my testimony, but I wanted to do these videos first. Uh, so when you do hear my testimony, you'll have a little bit more, you'll understand it a little bit better on where um, my walk has come from, from uh, thinking that I was a believer to becoming a believer, and then to realize that um, a lot of the things that were taught uh, were not biblical, and that... Um, in looking at the scriptures for myself and digging deeper and being very prayerful about it and asking um, asking the Most High to open my eyes and my heart to show me what the truth is. Okay, I don't want to have to always depend on asking man. Man is 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 uh, fallen. I want the word directly from the Holy Spirit. I want the word directly from Yah himself. And so that's where I am today. And um, a lot of people want to fight you on it. They want to argue, and that's fine. They want to question, that's fine. Um, so here I am making these videos with using my some of my notes that are in some of my journals and to just go over some basic things and maybe uh, it'll open your eyes and cause you to dig a little bit deeper into the word yourself rather than relying on, you know, um, a pastor, a priest, a rabbi, whoever, to give you direction and guidance. My direction and guidance comes from him above, okay? My faith in Yahusha, Jesus, the Son, is strong. I know that uh, I have made mistakes in my walk. I know that I still mess up. I know that I still sin unintentionally. Um, I know that uh, I don't keep the... Uh, I'm a work in progress is what I'm saying. And so the first part is what I covered in the, preview, in the video that's already posted, talking about some of the scriptures regarding uh, keeping uh, the covenant, keeping... Uh, the laws, the law, if you will. Uh, and I'm going to read here straight from my notes and then we'll, dis we'll discuss it. Feel free to comment uh, on what I say in the, in the uh, comment section. Uh, believers ought to be, uh, let's go back up here. The word testament as a translation of the Greek word diatheki, which means covenant. The word testament as a name for a collection of books is unknown to scripture. So we see the New Testament. That's what it's talking about here. Um, it comes to us through the Latin Vulgate. A covenant is a binding agreement between two parties. It is a two-party solemn agreement. It's a, excuse me, a two-party solemn bound by oath. It's an agreement bound by an oath. Two-party agreement. A testament is a written instru instrument by which someone has disposed of his estate okay we the renewed covenant is what we read we call the new testament it's it's the renewed covenant it's a covenant 
This exposes the very heart of the great apostasy of our time. And we cite Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. And this goes very deep, guys. He goes very deep in this book. Believers ought to be in a covenant relationship with Yahuwah, with Yahusha being the mediator. You could find that in Hebrews 8, 6, Hebrews 9, 15, Hebrews 12, 24. Feel free to read these scriptures for yourself. Yahusha has solemnly instituted the new covenant in Matthew 26, 28, when he says, For this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. <clears throat> Only as overcomers, the little flock are experiencing the blessings of the renewed covenant. We need to be overcomers. When Yahushua returns, it will become a physical reality. All that point, all that point, his laws will be binding to all. When he comes back in the second coming, his law is still going to apply to us believers in the new in the heavenly uh, kingdom, then on the new earth, the renewed earth. He will be king over all the earth. Revelation 11:15, Daniel 2:44, Daniel 7:18:27, Isaiah 24:23, Micah 4:7, Zechariah 14:4 4 through 21. Feel free to look up those scriptures and read them. The word testament is a description of our present spiritual realm, is the heritage that we inherited from Rome through the Latin Vulgate. The word gives the wrong impression of receiving only. It contributes to the erroneous teachings of only believe, grace only, good works are necessary, love only. It's important to understand this about love. It is not the rule whereby we must live. Love is the motive for keeping the law. And that's basically what I answered the lady, what I was trying to convey to her. Um, and if she comes back and, and wants to dialogue further, I'll point her to this video. I already pointed her to the book, and I'll point her directly to Scripture so she can see that. Scriptural love is qualified. It is specified by the stipulations of the law. Unqualified love grants permission for the act of adultery for the sake of love, murder for the sake of love, etc., Spiritual love is defined as the keeping of the commandments of Yahuwah. 1 John 5, 3, 2 John verse 6. Again, feel free to look these up. <clears throat> for In 1 John 5, 3, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. 2 John 6, And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that... As ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Okay, this is very clear. This is in the new, the renewed covenant, guys. This is the New Testament. So all of you that say, where do we, does it say we follow the, we have to follow the commandments in the New Testament? Um, I thought my pastor said he nailed the commandments to the cross and I no longer have to keep them. No, not true. This doctrine of only believe is the fruit of the work of the Spirit that works in the sons of disobedience, the spirit in the man of lawlessness who instituted this no law religion, the great apostasy, the mystery of lawlessness. Elohim warns about this in Psalms 2, 1 through 6. This is exactly what's, what has happened in our Christian walk, in our Christian world, excuse me, and is exactly the turning back or restoration which we, we must now come. Example, some time ago, a young man said he became a Buddhist because they have no do's and don'ts. It is, is it much different with us? So is it much difference in the uh, Christian faith today where it says um, no longer is there a list of commandments you have to follow? It's the same as this Buddhist was looking for. We are following the traditions of men. The man of lawlessness has indeed taken over. And we can see that in what's going on in the world. The B system is being built. Believers must understand what Scripture says and become followers of the Word, doers of the Word, and become overcomers. Because 
that is what's going to get us through the evil that's being perpetrated in this world today. It's not going to stop. It's not going back to the way it was yesterday. It's going to get worse and worse. The earth is defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. Isaiah 24, 5 through 6. The covenant has been broken, number one. Messianic believers have not properly taught the basic, simple, but clear messianic message of the New Testament, of, excuse me, the New Covenant. The law of Yahuwah written into our hearts and our minds by Yahusha, the mediator of the new or renewed covenant. Therefore, we must eliminate the word testament from the New Testament. We should be messianic scriptures or new covenant. So I'm just trying to stress home the point here that um, the modern church has glossed over. You have to dig deeper, guys. We are expected to be in a two-party agreement with our Elohim if we, we regard ourselves to be in true worship. We are bound to him by love, by his son, the mediator of the eternal covenant. We are married to him. Therefore, we are faithful to him willingly. We delight in the law of Yahuwah. It's not a, a list of do's and don'ts. We delight. We are in, in love with the bridegroom. This is a relationship. You hear it all the time. Or you were in a per, I'm in a personal relationship with Jesus. Yes, you are. You're bound to him by love. And it's not a willy-nilly love. It's the commandments uh, that he has told us to follow to prove that you love him. It is no longer a burden. It's not a burden for me to keep the Sabbath. It's not a burden. Because the day was changed to Sunday purposely. It's not a burden for me to keep the Sabbath. It's a blessing for me to keep the Sabbath. Because I love him and that is what I should be doing. Okay? It's not a burden for me to keep the feasts. The, the feasts that are in the Torah. In Leviticus. All over the Torah keeping of the feast. Yahu, just like the post says, all the followers of Yahushua kept the feast. Jesus, Yahushua himself, kept the feasts. He kept the Sabbath. So, I, I don't have to do that anymore? It changed somehow? No, it did not. It did not change. It is a joy to be obedient to Yahushua, the lawgiver, the covenant mediator. <clears throat> And of course, the name, the name of the Father and the name of the Son. Jesus is not his name. The Bible specifically says that his name, Yahushua, is in the Father's name. The name Jesus is not in the Father's name. You could go further and look into that yourself, but his name is not Jesus. Um, this is a resulting in the hiding of and the substitution of their identities and even supplanting of their names with those of idols, particularly sun deities. This book will go through in great detail and explain how that has occurred over the centuries and how many are still duped by it and following it. Um, Malachi 3.1 Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. Whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay, Elohim turned and gave Israel up to the worship of the host of heaven. He has done the same exactly the same to us too. We who regard ourselves as part of Israel. He has given us up to the host of heaven. Why? Because he has sent a strong delusion for many to believe the lie, the great lie that we are free from the binding covenant relationship, that we are free from the law. This is a delusion that has been placed upon uh, believers. This has resulted in the great apostasy, the mystery of lawlessness, 2 Thessalonians 2, Revelation 12, verse, uh, Revelation 12 through 22, chapters 12 through 22. Hebrews chapters 7, 8, 9, and 10 make it very clear. Yahusha, Jesus, 
fulfilled the Old Testament law concerning offerings, sacrifices, and the laws concerning the Levitical priesthood, which some call ceremonial laws, and nothing more. All the other feasts still remain, the Sabbath still remains, okay? You have to understand that. It's the ceremonial laws, the sacrifices. There's no longer the need to sacrifice over and over again. He is the, sac the propitiation for our sins. He satisfied, Yahushua satisfied, the righteous anger of Yahuwah. He is the Lamb of God, the final sacrifice. Therefore, the ceremonial laws do not apply to us. And that is it. We are not saved by good works. We are saved by favor, grace, through faith. So by following the commandments, like the girl, the lady asked in the question that she asked me, I'm not saved by following the feasts. I'm not saved by following the Sabbath. I'm saved by my faith in Yahushua, my trusting in his sacrifice for me. I show my love and I cannot, I cannot earn salvation. Okay, let's all understand that. We cannot earn salvation. Paul makes it very clear in Romans 3 and 4. We are saved by favor, grace alone. But note, we are saved by favor through faith unto doing good works. That is the clear message of Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, Titus 2, 14, and Titus 1, 16. When we come to salvation, our Savior commands us, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. John 5, 14. Also see John 8, 11. Again, sin in the scriptures emphatically describe it as lawlessness or transgressing of the law. And I gave those scriptures uh, earlier in the earlier video. 1 John 3, 4, Exodus 20, 20, Romans 3, 20, Romans 4, 15, Romans 7, 7, Jeremiah 16, 10 through 11. Can we truthfully say thy word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against thee? From Psalm 119, 11. If we do not have the law of Yahuwah in our hearts and in our minds, we are outside the new or renewed covenant. Important to know this, guys. This is the same covenant called the eternal covenant in Hebrews 13, 20. The eternal covenant, covenant has a sign. The Sabbath is the sign. According to Exodus 31, 16 through 17, shall we not return to the mediator of this covenant, Yahushua, and ask him to mediate the eternal and renewed covenant? Let me read Exodus 31, 16 and 17. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Amen. Okay, guys, these are just some general notes uh, from my journal, from the book, Come Out of Her, My People by C.J. Coster. I plan on doing more uh, videos on this, just like I plan to do videos on why the rapture is not pre-trib, it's at the end of the tribulation period, why um, nobody is in heaven right now when you die, the erroneous uh, teaching that you go to be with Jesus is falsely taught in the church today. The Bible is specifically clear that we go to sleep, our body goes and rots, turns back into dust, our soul goes into uh, the earth, where it's kept and held in a chamber for the second coming and for the resurrect, the final uh, resurrection at the end when Yahushua comes back um, after or at the end or directly after the second half of the tribulation. Um, these are all things that are not being taught today in the church that you have to dig deeper into the scriptures and see what they say. Okay, so please comment, questions, whatever. Please uh, join in the dialogue if you would like. 
dig deeper into the scriptures. And um, again, I highly recommend this book, Come Out of Her, My People by C.J. Coster, to kind of give you uh, an eye-opening understanding on what has taken place and what has slipped into the um, to the church. That way, uh, in the end, guys, it's just to build and strengthen your relationship with the Most High through His Son, Yahushua. If it means abandoning beliefs that I once held as truth, um, then so be it. Uh, if it means changing my life uh, further, if it means losing friends, losing uh, family, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it ha whatever happens, is part of my walk with Yahusha. Look at the apostles. Look at all the early church martyrs. They held to their uh, belief. They held to their faith. They knew the truth and the truth set them free. Was their life easy? No, it wasn't. Many of them, most of them, were martyred for it. How should we be any different today thinking that we're going to escape all this and somehow uh, not be here for the tribulation? It's nonsense. It's not what's taught in Scripture. It's not what Messiah taught. It's not what Paul taught. It's not what the apostles taught. It's not what's written. You're being um, led down the wrong road. You're being led down this Hollywood road of being left behind. These anything the most things that Hollywood uh, produces are going to give the twisted wrong uh, version of the biblical truth, because the doctrines of men they don't. Uh, the God of this world does not want you to know the truth. He wants you to go down. He wants you to go down with him in the end and believe the lie. So I'll stop it here, guys. Thank you for joining me. Take care. Blessings. Anthony signing off.